Hello, so welcome back to part two of our missionary lesson. Um, and for those of you who remember, um, if you can't, it's on YouTube. Um, we have been learning, are starting to learn about the life of somebody from Northern Ireland, from a little village just down the Arts Peninsula um, from Malay, and her name was Amy Carmichael. And last time we learned about how Amy had gone to India as a missionary. Do you know, whenever Amy was a little girl, she grew up going to church. Her parents took her to church every week, every Sunday morning, every Sunday evening, um, she would go. Um, and she learned lots and lots of things there. Lots of really important um, stories from the Bible and truths about God. And she believed everything that she heard. Um, she believed it was true. And one of the verses that Amy knew from she was a little girl um, was one that I'm sure that so many of you know as well. From the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you know, Amy knew that verse. She knew it so, so well. And one day she was in church and the minister had been preaching um, from that verse again. And he had come to the end of his sermon and he had asked everybody in the congregation to sing a song that I would say lots of you boys and girls know called Jesus Loves Me. And Amy loves singing. And he asked them after they had sang this song and um, that they would all take a moment and that they would... Uh, just take some time to pray afterwards and you know Amy as she was in church she didn't really remember very much of what the sermon had been about she remembered that verse um, but as she was singing Amy got this picture in her mind of Jesus as a shepherd one that um, we read about in the bible a lot um, searching for um, lost sheep and Amy, she realised that because of her sin, she was lost and that Jesus was searching for her. And, you know, right there that day in the church, um, Amy prayed and she prayed and she asked that God would forgive her for all the wrong things that she had done. That God would forgive her for her sins. Um, she didn't want to live that way anymore and she wanted to place her trust in God. And Amy prayed and she prayed and she thanked God for all the things that he had done for her um, that night when she got home. And she, she, sat, she read her Bible. She realised that God had done all of those things because he loved her. And that night, Amy learnt another important lesson that she was going to need to remember many, many years down the line in India. She learnt that God loves even the little children and he cares for them. Do you know, whenever Amy was in India, she saw many, many boys and girls who all needed to know that God loved them and that God had sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for them. And Amy prayed so much that she would have opportunities to speak to these boys and girls and to tell them about Jesus and about his love for them. And there was one little girl who, well... This was a little girl who Amy was going to get the chance to help. And this little girl was called Prina. And Prina was just seven years old. Prina lived in the temple. Her mum had left her there, um, had sold her into the temple as a slave girl. And it was very, very scary. And Prina was terrified in the temple. And you know, one night Prina ran away. She ran home. It took her three days. She ran for 20 miles and she didn't stop until she had got home to her mum. And she opened the door of her house and she shouted in, Oh, mother, 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 please don't send me back to the temple. Don't make me go back there. I will be good. I will do whatever you want. But please don't let me go back. And, you know, Prina had run away from the temple, but the temple women had run after her. And the temple women had followed her and they arrived at Prina's house. And Prina's mum could see this. And Prina just shoved her back out the door, back into the hands of the temple women. And they took her back to the temple. Um, it was called the Temple of the Great Lake because of where it was beside. And you know, Prina was punished for what she had done. 
Prina, um, her little hands were taken and they were burnt um, on the palms of her hands to remind her um, that she had done something so wrong by running away from the temple um, and never to do it again. And you know, every night Prina would get into bed and she would just cry and cry and cry. She didn't want to be in the temple. Um, it wasn't a good place to live. The people weren't kind, the people weren't nice to them. And little Prina just wanted to leave. And you know, one night little Prina, she got down on her hands and knees in front of a stone god. And she was crying as she was there. And she was praying something that was really, really strange to the stone god. She was praying that she would die. That's how horrible life was for her in the temple. And as Prina was there praying, well, nothing happened. And the reason nothing happened is because, well, it was a stone god. It couldn't even hear what Prina was saying, never mind answer her prayers. And you know, Prina went back to her room and she was so sad and she was so disappointed. And it was tough in the temple. And the ladies of the temple warned Prina every day not to run away. And they told her that there was a child catcher outside the gates of the temple and that the child catcher was going to get her and was going to harm her. Do you know, as Prina sat there, she thought, the child catcher can't be any worse than this. And she began to come up with another plan to escape. And this time she thought about it and she thought, I have to do it whenever nobody can see me. Um, I have to do it whenever it's quiet and I have to go dark. And I need to find the child catcher because it can't be any worse than where I am. And so Prina, when it was dark, she spotted her chance to go. The gates of the temple were opened and she ran. And she ran the whole way down to the river. And she got into the river and she started to swim across. She got to the other side and she saw on the other side of the river an Indian lady. And this Indian lady had a really kind face. And Prina just ran up to her and she said, can you help me find Missy Amy, the child catcher? And the lady, because it was night time, took Prina home to her house. And she gave Prina something to eat and, and she looked after her that night. And very early the next morning, she took her to Amy's house. And Amy couldn't believe it. God had answered her prayer and had shown her a child from the temple who she could help. And Prina didn't know what to do. And she went into Amy's house and, you know, Amy took Prina on her knee and she smiled at her. And she gave Prina the chance to tell her story. And Prina told her all about how life had been so hard in the temple. Prina told her about all the terrible things that had happened to her in the temple. Prina showed her her hands and she showed her um, the horrible thing that had been done when she had ran away the first time. And you know, Amy looked in her house and she saw a little doll. And she took that doll and she gave it to Prina. And she smiled at her and she said that she didn't need to worry, that she would be safe and that she would be looked after. And Prima, tears in her eyes, she said, please don't send me back to the temple. I want to stay here because you love me. Nobody has ever loved me before, not even my own mother. And you know, as Prima said those words, Amy remembered that lesson that she had learned as a child, that God loves even the little children. And you know, Amy said to Prina, Prina, there's somebody who loves you. I will love you, but there's somebody else who loves you. The great God who made heaven and earth, he loves you, Prina. And Prina looked at Amy and she said, what do you mean? And Amy started to tell Prina about God and about all the wonderful things that God had made and all the wonderful things that God had done. But that how God had shown just how much he loved her when he had sent Jesus to die on the cross for her. And Amy took Prina's hands and says, Prina, you have scars on your hands and Jesus has scars on his hands too. And that was a shine of how much he loves you. He was willing to die on the cross for you. And Prina's little face got confused and she started to cry. She was saying, this man loved me, but he died. And Amy said, but Prina, he didn't stay dead. He rose again and he's in heaven. And he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a friendship with you. He wants you to know him forever and ever as your friend. And that very day, sitting on Amy's knee, Prina prayed. And Prina prayed that God would be her friend, that God would forgive her for all the wrong things that she had done. She thanked God for sending Jesus to die on the cross for her. And she said to Amy, 
I know that God is always with me. Even here now in your house, I know that God is with me. And Prina felt so brave standing with Amy. She knew Amy loved her. She knew that God loved her and that Jesus had died for her. Do you know, Amy was expecting there to be trouble. Prina was a girl from the temple and the temple weren't going to be happy. The, the temple women weren't going to be happy that she had ran away. And just as Amy had thought, outside the door of her house, the temple women were standing and Prina became so brave and she stood beside Amy, but these temple women were cross. They were angry. They were shouting. They called Amy the child catcher. They called her evil. And they called Prima a little thief. And they were getting more and more angry with every second that passed. But little Prima stood on the doorstep of Amy's house and held Amy's hand. And she said, I am not going back with you into the faces of these angry women. And next time we'll find out what happened.